Hi folks, it is Wednesday the 23rd of September and we're going to study God's word tonight in Hebrews chapter 2. Before we do, let's pause and pray. Father, thank you again for the day that we have had, for your blessing upon us. Lord, a day with um, changes from previous days, uh, as, our, as our lockdown changes in some way, as rules and regulations are altered. Just be with us and help us, Father, and help us to look out for those around us here struggling at this time. But Lord, as we come now to look at your word, please just help us to quieten and still our hearts, to draw close to you and to know a real sense of your presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me read to you Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 to 18. These are from the New Living Translation. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children God has given me. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels, he came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. He is able to help us when we are being tested. Amen. The start of Hebrews, the writer outlines why he believes Jesus is the Messiah. And then he starts to develop the relationship between ourselves and Jesus and God. And that relationship is developed even further again when it comes to verse 11. And it's an exciting verse. Hear, let's hear it again. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. We are being brought into God's family. We are being adopted whenever... Um, we have that personal relationship with God. Whenever we call Jesus our saviour, whenever you call God our father, we're part of that special family. And it says that Jesus makes us holy. And it's an ongoing process. It's not that he made them holy and have the same father, or he will make them holy, but he makes them holy. So whenever we have that relationship with God, he starts to change us. And it's through the example of Jesus and what he has done for us. Our sins are forgiven us. The sins of the past and the sins of the future. And God wants us to be transformed, to be more like him, to be more holy. So that's a process which will not be completed until such time as we join our Father, our Heavenly Father, in heaven. But isn't it wonderful that the verse goes on to say that is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Jesus is proud to acknowledge us as adopted into his family. Wow. You know, if you've ever talked to anybody who's been adopted, there's that sense of rejection and loneliness. Sometimes a sense of shame Nobody wants me, nobody loves me. But when a family adopts them, and when a family takes them in, it really touches a life to realise, actually somebody does care for me and love me. That's what God does with us. He takes us who we think we are unlovable, we think we are unforgivable in what we do, and he calls us his children. And Jesus calls us his brothers and sisters. What an amazing a relationship that we have. What an amazing God. It goes on to say there, um, for he said to God, now this is Jesus speaking, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. That's a quote taken from Psalm 22, verse 22. 
So the writer is saying there, you know, Jesus knew that he'd be doing this. The Psalms quite often are prophetic. They, they talk about what will happen in the future. Um, they talk about, yes, it, it, it's, it's a, an account or, of feelings and emotions at the time. And the Psalms are great that way because they're so honest and true. But they also point forward to Jesus and to eternity. So by saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, that's Jesus talking about his father, about God, whenever he's going to be here on earth. I will praise you among your assembled people. Yeah, Jesus did that. The people gathered around him and listened. He went into the temple and looked at how he, he spoke and he, how he taught, how people were amazed by what he said. So it's a passage talking about that and predicting that. Verse 13 says, he also said, I will put my trust in him, that is, I and the children God has given to me. And that's a quote taken from Isaiah chapter 8, verses 17 to 18. But look at it, I and the children God has given to me. God made us, God created us. It says he made us in, in his image. That can mean lots of different things, but it's the fact that he gave us an eternal soul. He gave us the right to choose. We chose sinful nature and we turned our backs on him. But then God knew that would happen and he set in place a plan for our forgiveness, which was Jesus. And he knew that there would be those who would turn to him and who would accept what Jesus has done. I and the children God has given to me. We are those children who God has given to Jesus. But these other verses, these these would have been very cha challenging to any Jews at the time. Very hard for me for them to understand. But they again are incredible words. Which just show the amount of love which God has for us. And which should touch us and should move us. And should challenge us about where we sit today. Verse 14. Because God's children are human beings. Made of flesh and blood. You know, again, the writer declares that we are God's children. So many people in the world today deny the existence of God. It's all about science and what science can do, or it's all about um, their own, you know, living in harmony with what's around them and doing good. It's because little good will be paid back to them again. You know, um, people just don't see God, and yet it was God who made us. We're his children, made with flesh and blood. So the son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Jesus did an amazing thing for us. Jesus gave up everything in heaven to come and live on this earth, to take on a flesh and blood body to be born of a human woman mary to suffer the sort of things that we suffer to have hardship because it says only in that way could he die and only by him dying could he break the power of the devil here the, the power of death only by jesus dying a perfect sacrifice could he take away our sins Think of the, the system of sacrifices which um, God sets up in the Old Testament for his people where they are to bring an offering, um, a lamb or a goat, there's bulls. But each time that that is brought, it is to be the best of what the people have, not the worst of what they have. And in fact, in, in the New Testament, they get challenged uh, and different places they get challenged about how they have brought the runt of the litter how they've brought the, the animals which are diseased and blind uh, and lame and that's what they've soft, s sacrificed to God and, and how do they expect God to accept something which is broken because they simply didn't want it uh, but what they should do is bring the best of what they had Jesus was the best and only sacrifice for us that's the point that's being made here only Jesus could die for us as a one-off sacrifice to continue to make us holy uh, until the day that we go to be with God in heaven. 
He's the only one who could do that. And by doing that, he breaks the power of the devil who had the power of death. So Satan loves it. Um, Adam and Eve, they, they turn against God. They, they eat of the fruit of the, the knowledge of good and evil. Sin comes into the world and the relationship with God is broken. And bar- sin comes in as a barrier. The devil then has the power and the control. That's why Satan is called the prince of this earth. You know, and again, like I said before, it's why um, whenever Jesus is tempted in the wilderness, you know, Jesus is called to bow down and, and worship Satan and he'll give him everything that's there. You know, they, they're, we have to recognise that Satan has power on this earth. You, you only have to open your eyes and look around you to realise that. And the power of death. Death, which means that we cannot fix our relationship with God. Death, which means that we can't spend eternity with God. Death that means that we will be judged and that we will pay for what we have done. But it says about Jesus, only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. People do fear dying. People don't want to know sometimes what lies beyond. They're scared because they, they, they say they're leaving, leaving their loved ones behind. They're scared because of doing anything which is unknown. Lots of people don't like the unknown. You want to test it out, put a box on a table or put three or four boxes on the table. Have some noises playing in the background like a, 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 like a snake hissing or something snapping. And then ask people to put their hands into the boxes without seeing what's in them. Most people are terrified. Most people will hesitate and not want to do it. The fear of the unknown. It's not on this year, but if you've ever watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, I mean, the challenges where they put their hands into different places or their heads, you see the people shake and tremble with fear. People are assuming by dying because it's a separation. Whereas death was meant to be the start of our eternal relationship with God. It was supposed to be the next part, the next phase, the most perfect, wonderful part. But Satan robbed us of that whenever sin came into this world. And Jesus is here to restore that for us, to bring it back. Verse 16 says, we also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Angels were created by God, just like we were created by God. But the angels don't need Jesus to die for them and to take away their sin. The the angels are are a different type of being. Um, When it talks in the the New Testament uh, and in the Old Testament as well about evil spirits and about Jesus casting out evil spirits, that's, that's, that's fallen angels or demons, as you might call them. People who, you know, th- those beings who have turned their back on God uh, and, and who fight against God. Jesus wasn't sent to redeem them. It again talks in Revelation about how they've been judged, or they're bound in chains until the final judgment. Um, no, Jesus didn't come for them. Jesus came for us. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Now, that's not just about the Israelites, because, you know, as you read through, you realise that we, we, Abraham's going to be the, the, the father of all nations, it says. It's all of us. It's all people. Jesus came for us. Verse 17, therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be merciful and a faithful high priest before God. For Jesus to be able to identify with us and realise what we have gone through. He had to go through the same. He had to live the same sort of life so that he could be our high priest. Because the high priests were the Levites um, in, in the tribe of Israel. They were the part of the people. So Jesus had to be part of us to be our high priest. It says then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Jesus would be that sacrifice 
It says he would offer a sacrifice. That's himself. But then because he's gone through that, he's able to help us when we are being tested. Jesus knows what it's like to be a human being. He knows what it's like to have flesh and blood. He knows what it's like to be hungry and cold and alone. He also knows what it's like to have friends around him and, and, and to have that comfort. He has lived the life of a person. He really can identify with us and we really can identify with him. We have somebody who understands us. And it's not just because he's God, but it's because he has suffered like us. Yet, we live in 2,000 plus days since Jesus was alive. Things have changed a lot. Um, houses and cars and planes and all those sort of modern things that you talk about, and even this and how we talk and how we communicate. But we still suffer hurt and anguish and loss. We still struggle with our feelings and emotions. That hasn't changed. And we are still a sinful people. That definitely hasn't changed. And we still need Jesus and what he's done for us. That will never change. God says I am the same yesterday, today and forever. That he never changes. You know, no matter what we go through in life, God understands and Jesus understands. Even in what we're doing at the minute and what's happening in our country, Jesus can identify with us. Jesus can comfort us if we let him. And he will walk with us again if we just let him walk with us. God wants to be our Heavenly Father. Jesus wants to be our brother. He wants us to be his brothers and sisters. He wants us to be adopted into his family. But we have to, to let him into our lives. And, and th this passage is all about that relationship and telling us what Jesus has done and, and showing us again the promises from the Old Testament about where it said this would happen and how it would be our relationship with God. So as you're watching us, I wonder, are you sitting alone? Are you sitting alone because there's nobody else in the house? Are you sitting alone because nobody else in the house wants to, to watch this with you? Are you sitting watching this alone because you're feeling alone and you're feeling down and dejected? You're not alone. God is with you. God wants to walk through this life with you and Jesus kind of, Jesus knows what you're going through. Just tell him. Just let him know how you feel right now. I, I just pour that out to him. And then Jesus take that burden from you. At this time, probably in particular, there's, there's an awful lot of issues around mental health. So many people are struggling and finding it difficult. Um, and this is going to be with us for some time. There's no easy fix to what's going on. Um, so we need to look out for one another, but we also just need to turn to God ourselves and just let him know how we're feeling and just pour it all out. He'll understand and he will help us. Just open the door and let him in. Verse 18. Since he himself, Jesus, has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can say those words, Heavenly Father. Thank you that you have sent Jesus and that you have adopted us. Lord, thank you that Jesus lived as a man as he lived his flesh and blood so that he really can know what we are going through and can identify with us and walk with us and help us. Lord, right now, just help us to pour out to you what is troubling us.
Father, please take our troubles, our concerns. Please take this burden from us and draw us closer to you each and every day. Thank you, Father, now and always. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining in this evening, folks, as we have done that together. Again, if there's any questions that come up in relation to this, please feel free to contact me. Is there anything you want to have a chat about? I can't get into people's houses now. We've been told we can't mix. Um, but I can certainly sit on the phone and chat. Or, you know, we can sit and have a cup of coffee and chat through things. Please, if you need to, just get in touch. Um, and let's walk this road together. But in the meantime, take care and God bless. And I'll see you again next Wednesday evening. Bye for now.